guys. Finally Sleeps here. Doing something different today. We're going to talk about the market. We put the vi fishing video out. Uh, it's probably been a few weeks ago. And I'm seeing that there's comments that are constantly coming on there where people are still confused. So we're going to tackle a few of the misconceptions and a few high points for what is required in fishing today. Uh, but first, make sure you like comment and subscribe turn on notifications here at YouTube don't miss out on that that way every time a video posts you don't miss it make sure you follow along at twitch where we live stream multiple days every week usually right before reset and big shout out to the newest members and some big supporters at finally he sleeps.com Alex GS Kevin Ellison Prasateyu Darren McConnell Denzel Bonsu John Callahan, Glenn, Christoph, VKFC, and Sherrod Dindu. Just want to say thanks for all of your support. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's talk about the market. All right, let's take a look at this. We'll get into this right away. The first question I get constantly asked is, how do you hold more than 1,200 players? You've heard us talk about it in the past, the parking lot. That's what the inbox is. So you see here, we have lots of sold players. We have... 560 players in the reserves. That includes the any player that you have active. That is total. So I have 560 players in my squad right now, reserves there. But there's also 1,290 over on the side. So that's 1,850 cards between those two. But I still have stuff listed in the market. There's still stuff listed. So I have just over 3,000 players right now across all all avenues of it that's where they are the three different places your reserves the inbox and in the market that's how you have hold more than 1200 the parking lot is actually your inbox so when stuff times out get down to where the stuff's timed out if you leave it here as dismissed you can hold as many as you want over there the problem is is you have to scroll through everything to get to the sales now there's two ways to handle this. The first way is you buy off every, everything of one OVR and you list one of each into the market on 24 hour. Then you list the rest in the market on let's say a four hour cycle. So if you have, let's say you pick the OVR 70s. Let's say you pick 70s and you have four to six of each individual player. If you list one of each player on a 24 hour cycle, then you list the remaining three to five on a four hour cycle at a much higher value. You're not necessarily expecting to sell that player. You're waiting for it to time out at the end of the four hours. Then it sits in your inbox. If the one on the 24 hour cycle sells, Instead of going to your reserves to list the player, you go to your inbox, find that player, dismiss it, put it into your reserves, then list it. That way you're holding them. That's why it's called a parking lot. You're using it to store your players above 1,200. Once you hit 1,150, it starts to give you the warnings that you have too many players. So you've got to be actively working on how you're going to hold it. That's the first way is to use the inbox as your parking lot. The second way, stagger your times. You can post, if you have, let's say 1200 of one OVR and you can't hold them all into your reserves, work A to D, okay? Just work the first the third, first third of the alphabet, post those on a 24 hour, then claim E through P and list them on a 24 hour and then claim Q through, you know, and you're just moving on. So you're moving three different sections so that stuff doesn't time out all at once and you can work in portions. The clear button. Let's talk about the clear button. This thing right here at the top. Do you want to clear your inbox? The following messages will be dismissed. Friend invites, league invites, league application notification, and expired mark postings. It does not clear and collect what you've sold. It only clears your dismissed. And if you have more in your inbox that are dismissed, 
then you can hold by clicking clear, it locks you out. And you have to either use all those players as training or dump them back into the market before you can do anything else. Be careful with the clear button. Number one, it's still bugged, so it's gonna crash the game. But when you come back, it does clear everything. But if you do it and you need to get in to play a game for reset or anything, or let's say a new event is being released, you're gonna have to post everything back into the market or use everything as training and burn those players into somebody else before you can get back into actually doing anything in the game. So be careful on the clear button. Be aware of what it does. All right, the second question I'm constantly getting asked is what do I do when my players time out? I have I bought I bought a thousand players of I bought a thousand sixty threes and I posted them all last night and I only had ten sales. Now what do I do? First, before you do anything, you need to watch the first video. Don't skim through it. Don't watch the first 10 minutes and go, yeah, I get it. You need to watch the whole thing to understand what it is. Then go back to the last season and watch a couple of the other fishing videos because the methods from last season are being implemented into this season. If you don't understand what you're getting yourself into, do not attempt it. Fishing is not a... Put, buy all the cards, throw them in overnight, and make a bunch of money. It doesn't work that way. You need to understand that going in. You are not going to make a million coins the first night unless you've invested 10 million in players. It doesn't work that way. It is a cumulative, gradual grow in profit. And it's going to take you a week two weeks, maybe three weeks to get out of the hole and be into the black to start making coins. It is a choice that you have to make to commit to this. It is not a quick turnaround. It is a long time, long term situation for massive amounts of coins over the course of the season. It's not a quick thing. That is the first thing you have to understand. So the question is, what do I do? I bought, I bought a thousand 63 rated silvers. I posted one of each last night and I had five sales. And I checked all the duplicates and there wasn't really any big spikes and I sold them. I had 20 sales. So I bought a thousand. I paid 800 coins each for those thousand. So I have 800,000 invested. And last night I claimed my sales and I only got back 35,000 coins. What did I do wrong? Well, number one, you did nothing wrong. You got back 35,000 coins for 30 cards, whatever it was that you sold. So you doubled the money that you put in. That's the way you've got to look at it. So the next night, let's say the next night's a bad night and you only sell 20 cards. Okay, you made 25,000 coins back. Third night, you have a good night, you sell 100. And now you made 200,000 coins that third night. And you're like, oh my gosh, maybe this does work. The next night you go back to 25,000. After about two weeks, if you add up what you're bringing in, you've got back your 800,000 that you invested, plus you still have 900, 750, whatever it is of the initial investment, and now every night of sales is clear profit. That's what fishing is. It is not an overnight success. It is a long-term investment. If you're not willing to post cards every single day, and you're not willing to invest money in to be able to earn money down the road, then fishing is not for you. You need to find something else. You need to go somewhere else. That is the first thing. So do not come into the comments and say, I posted a whole bunch of cards last night and only some sold. Is that good? Now what do I do? That's not how it works. And number two when this, don't adjust your price. You set your price at the very beginning and that's where you stay. You can adjust it a little bit here and there here and there, if your sales dictate it. So if you have a really good night and you're seeing spikes that are much higher than you had the night before, then maybe push it up a little bit. But if you have a couple of nights with no sales, don't dumb down your value to try to generate sales. That's not how it works. Just be patient, just keep posting.
So the biggest question that comes up in the streams is how do I know how much to list the cards for? That's probably the easiest part of the whole thing. So once you decide to start buying cards, so let's say we're buying 71s. We're gonna buy 71s and we find that their value is, I'm guessing here, let's say a thousand coins. To where we start buying them for a thousand coins. There we got ones. We'll bump it up. Let's say we're paying thirteen fifty. Nice round number. Okay, so we start buying cards for one thousand three hundred and fifty. That's where we're value is. So thirteen fifty is where we're starting. I would say when you first get into the method of fishing, if you want to make things simple, your starting price should be double what you're paying. So 2,700 would be my starting price. And then maybe four to six times what you originally bought the cards for. So if we were buying them for 1350 and we're listing them at 2,700, you could list them at anywhere with a buy it now, anywhere from 5,400 to about 8,000. So for me, I would list those cards at 2,700 starting and 7,000 buy it now on a 24 hour cycle and stick with it. See what happens, you're looking for duplicates. That's how you figure the numbers. It's really not that difficult. Some OVRs you may have to push higher, some OVRs you push lower. If you're buying them, if the initial buy-in value is really, really low, like if you're buying cards for four or 500 coins, then your, your buy it now is gonna be higher. It might be six to 10 times what you're originally paying. If you're original starting price is higher so let's say you're fishing elites and you're buying elites at a hundred thousand coins then i'm not going to double and do four to six times i may do one and a half times for starting price and double for buy it now at the elite level the more money you have invested the smaller the gap in the spike Let's break this down in simple numbers because another question people ask is they, they don't understand how just a few sales per night can generate profit. So we'll start from the beginning. Let's say we find an OVR that we buy coins for a thousand a piece. Let's say 70 OVR is 800 to a thousand coins. You can buy cards, buy, 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 buy. So you take two days to buy a thousand cards at a thousand coins each. So you're a thousand players, a thousand coins each, that's a total of one million coins invested. That's a base level. That's a good place to start. If you sell an average of 20 players per night at just 5,000 coins, I mean, these are simple numbers. So if we go back to what we said before, what price are you selling at? If I'm buying them for a thousand, my starting price would be double. So let's say 2,000. And my buy it now would be four to six times. So let's say we set our buy it now at 5,000 coins. So we bought for 1,000, we started at two, we did a bin on 24 hours at 5,000. If you sell 20 players and you find no spikes, but you just sell 20 players averaging at 5,000 coins a piece, that's 100,000 coins. It adds up quickly. That means after 10 nights, you've recovered your initial million coin investment. It took you 10 nights to get into the black. That's what we're looking for. Now, if you have 10, if you sold 20 players every night, in 10 nights, you're down 200 players. So now you're only got 800 players left. So the other big portion of this is you need to continue to buy players because your initial investment is gonna get smaller and smaller every night. So you need to continue to recover more players. If you bought 20, or if you sold 20 players, you need to buy 20 more players at a thousand coins. So that means you're buying back a 20,000 coins worth of players every day. So you need to subtract that from your sales. So we're making 100,000 coins a day, but we're spending 20,000 coins buying players to fill in the gaps. So we're really only making 18,000 or 80,000 coins per day. That means it's gonna take you 13 days to get into the black and then from day 14 on, daily profit. Everything that you sell, you're making in profit. And if you have a day that you sell 40 cards, 40 players, 40 sales, buy 40, 40 new players. Just redistribute your profit back into more cheap players. If you find that you can't buy players for a thousand coins each, 
Maybe you don't buy today. You wait a couple of days to see if the value drops. If the value goes way up and you say you can't buy cards for less than 3000 then you're definitely not going to set your starting price based on what you originally paid. You might increase your starting price because right now the value in that card has increased. And if you get to a point where, let's say, you bought players early, let's say you bought cards um, that you were spending a thousand on and all of a sudden two weeks later as you continue to fish you can't buy cards for a thousand all of a sudden they're up to like three thousand card or three thousand coins per card then at that point you might want to consider a sell-off you list all your players at four thousand starting price ten thousand buy it now see what happens and then dump and move on to another OVR because at that point you could easily triple or quadruple your money left in the thousand cards that you have and move on to somewhere else. It's an opportunity. Some people do it. Personally, I just kind of adjust my numbers and see where it goes. Okay, before we get off here, one last couple of tips. People are constantly asking, hey, what's the best OVR to fish? There are three different markets, three, three different markets that you can be in. They are not necessarily regional. Uh, we've got international. It, it, it's not about region. It just, you get divided up at the very beginning of the season when you first log in and create your account. You get divided into three different markets. Each market has different OVRs that work well. Uh, it Over the course of the season, generally, each of the three markets kind of generate the same numbers. So don't think that, oh, well, that market's much better than my market or that, because over the course of the entire season, Market A may have a month where it's got very low sales, but market B is way high. And then later in the spring, they shift. And then market C has been kind of plateaued. And then all of a sudden, market C will have a fantastic month. If you play the entire season, all three markets kind of, it's a wash, whichever one you're in. But if a OVR is working great in market A, it might not be so good in market B this week, but it might be better next week. So it doesn't necessarily matter what market you're in as long as you're patient and you hold it out. Another thing is, is you can also fish multiple OVRs. That way, if let's say you're doing 70, uh, 63, and 67. So you've got three OVRs you're fishing. And 70s have a bad night, 63s have a bad night, but your 67s do well, then it's still not a wash. 63s have a good night, but the other two do bad. It, if you kind of spread out your investment, you don't put all of your eggs into one basket, it can definitely help. But again, to make fishing effective, you need to have about a thousand cards of that one OVR to make sure it works. And this is what happens. This is how we're gonna end this. This is what happens when you clear your inbox, not good. So we crashed. Let's open it back up. The dreaded lockout, here it comes. Item limit reached, max player limit of 1200. So let's see how many we've got. So 1765, which means for me to get back into the game where I can play any of the events, and do anything besides train and check out League versus League, I've got to start putting players back into the market. That's what you want to avoid. All right, guys, that's it. I hope that helped and it cleared up some of the problems people were having with fishing, and it kind of gives you a little bit deeper understanding. If you want to know more about the market and all the different ways that you can make coins in it, make sure you check out FinallySleeps.com and follow along on the Twitch streams. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications here at YouTube. That way you never miss any of the streams when we go live. Uh, check out the Discord servers below. The two links are for the FootMobile Twitch Discord server and the big Reddit FootMobile server for the, all of the FIFA Mobile community. I'll make sure that the link to the original fishing, uh, the market fishing video is in the description. And I'll also post it over there. It'll be be up there so you guys can just click the link there and move on thanks a lot for hanging out with me tonight check out all the links and i'll see you guys on twitch as long as you guys keep watching i'll keep making videos